Good afternoon, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's retirement ceremony honoring Defender Master Sergeant Michael L. Munyon. My name is Technical Sergeant Andrew Williams, and I will be your narrator. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the invocation by Chaplain Kovos. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Gracious Father, we gather this afternoon to thank and to celebrate one of our Air Force finest, Master Sergeant Munyon. Nuff said, perhaps Nuff said, because you already know the greatness that you created in him. So for all of us gathered, we join him, we join his family, we join his friends. And we are grateful for over 22 years of dedicated service. An Air Force reshaping survivor, Master Sergeant Munyon, continually shared his blessedness everywhere he went with his surrounding community, and we are grateful. And we also celebrate him as he enjoys the prestige of being a Hall of Famer, Athlete of the Year, Facebook expert, and a Marcelino's lover. Gracious Father, we, the Air Force community, have enjoyed the blessings that Master Sergeant Munyon selflessly shared with us. In turn, we pray that you bless him in his new phase in life, bless his business endeavors where he dreams of spreading more goodness. And Father, if there is a selfie section in your heavenly kingdom, grant him immediate access as he has proven in this earthly journey to be a selfie champion. Grant him success, great success, good health, and a plentiful supply of panache. All glory and honor to you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Chaplain Kovos. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. On behalf of Colonel Callender, we would like to welcome you to the retirement ceremony of Master Sergeant Michael Munyon. At this time, it is my pleasure to recognize our distinguished guests attending today's ceremony. Commander, 65th Air Base Wing, Colonel Martin Rothrock and his wife, Beth Rothrock. Command Chief, 65th Air Base Wing, Chief Master Sergeant David Klink. <laughs> Vice Commander, 65th Air Base Wing, and today's presiding officer, Colonel Michael Callender, accompanied by his wife, Anne, and daughters, Emily and Claire. <laughs> Representing the 65th Medical Group, Lieutenant Colonel Richard Smith and his wife, Debbie. Superintendent, 65th Medical Group, Chief Master Sergeant Maxine White. 
Deputy Commander, 65th Mission Support Group, Lieutenant Colonel John Caranta. <laughs> Superintendent, 65th Mission Support Group, Chief Master Sergeant John Storms. <laughs> and finally, we would like to give a warm welcome to all commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, supervisors, and the members of Team Lodges. Thank you for being here to share this special occasion with Master Sergeant Munyon. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Callender. Colonel Rothrock, Mr. Rothrock, Chief, and uh, members of the Lodges team, fellow Lodges members and defenders, welcome. Vocation and advocation. I want to do a small poem in honor of you, sir. But yield who will to their separation, my object in living is to unite my avocation and my vocation. As two eyes make one sight, only where love and need are one is the deed ever really done for heaven and future's sake. It's a poem by Robert Frost. Uh, I thought it typified Master Sergeant Munyon. For 22 years, Master Sergeant Mike Munyon's life has been uniting of his vocation and his avocation. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that Mike has brought together the thing that he does to make a living in life with what he loves to do in life. Mike Munyon has been a professional airman, a security specialist at a time when it was a very particular and difficult job, a deputy sheriff corrections officer. In short, he has served the public in uniform his entire adult life. Now, no discussion about Mike would be complete without mentioning martial arts. Well, Chaplain stole my thunder. All you need to do is look at his Facebook page. But I'm not going to talk about fighting or tournaments or some strange sounding word for boxing during this speech. What is more appropriate to discuss on the occasion of his retirement from active duty is why he was ideally suited to be a defender. In order to do this, we must first know something about another person, not from the East, but from the West. Sir Robert Peel, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Robert Peel reformed criminal law in the United Kingdom. In fact, he created the modern police force. The police uh, officers in the city of London are known as Bobbies as a tribute to him. Robert Peel understood that the power of the police to fulfill their function and duties is dependent upon public approval. Not by pandering to public opinion, but by constantly demonstrating absolute impartial service to the law and by readily offering service and friendship to all members of the public without regard to wealth or social standing. Mike was made for this job. According to Robert Peel, police existence, actions, and behavior are dependent upon their ability to maintain and secure public respect. So how do you get respect? Mike knows how. He earned it and secured it from his peers and from the public. The best way to get respect first, integrity. Starts our core values. And I won't try to draw a parallel between Mike's career and integrity. If I couldn't, we wouldn't be here. But perhaps the greatest example of Mike's integrity incurred when he chose to enlist. He knew who he was. He was honest with himself and, more importantly, honest with his recruiter. As the story goes, he wanted to be a security specialist at a time when it was not in vogue or a particularly desirable job. But he knew where his talents lie. Back in the early 90s, there were two kinds of security forces members law enforcement, and security. 
Law enforcement was a very active job, very visible, right? very rewarding career path, one sought by most recruits. Security was not. Long days of guarding planes out in the missile fields, never being right, always being cold. Maelstrom Air Force Base, Montana in the wintertime is not a fun place to be. Since Mike was honest with, him, with himself and his recruiter, he was placed in the right job. To let you know how perfect he was to be a security specialist, his reports quickly uh, state that he quickly outpaced his peers through hard work and determination. He set the standards for them to follow, teaching his peers and newly assigned subordinates. Right? This brilliant, then, young leader earned an exceptionally well-qualified on his initial rating and led the highest QC pass rates in all of Charlie Flight. In short, he learned, he worked, he taught, and he excelled. Yet life threw him a curveball. The Air Force let him go. He was required to separate due to a force management program that punished well-qualified personnel for the mistake of bringing in too many recruits into the Air Force. While over the next few years, they're a little mysterious to the Air Force, Mike did not let the time go to waste. He joined the Air National Guard. He leveraged his security skills by becoming a Deputy Sheriff Corrections Officer for the state of Nevada. Another tough job. Unarmed, locked in cramped quarters with dozens of criminals with multiple life sentences. In a security, uh, uh, <clears throat> So how do you maintain security in a prison with a public that has no social standing? Well, according to Robert Peel, it's through courtesy. Right? Mike was nice, respectful, fair, and just. You see, Peel and Master Sergeant Munyon would state that the power of the police to fulfill their functions and duties is dependent upon public approval. In prison, security is maintained with force. But respect and peace, I'm sorry, peace is maintained with respect. His character combined, the, uh, combined with Peel's talents allowed him to keep the peace, not by brute force, but by courtesy. When that organization, too, was forced to downsize, Mike once again found himself on the outside. Being let go twice might have been too much for most people. Such a blow may have caused another person to find a new line of work. Mike is not one to sit on his laurels and complain about how tough life is or how unfair it is. He got up, dusted himself off, and pressed ahead. Mike persevered. He rejoined the Air Force and received an EPR that spans four years. Not, to, not this time, not just as a security specialist, but rather a security forces squadron member with both security and law enforcement duties. A bit of a change, but nothing he couldn't handle. At Vandenberg Air Force Base, he grew into a model NCO. Several EPRs, quarterly awards, and multiple team awards show how good he was at his job. He was identified by his demeanor and his professionalism, and he was selected to assist US Marshals, the OSI, and FBI in handling of 12 Greenpeace protesters. Now, there's a segment of our population that has very strong and negative feelings about national missile defense. To them, public trust and ICBMs are not words that go together. Whether you agree or disagree with the protesters, what is important is that our security forces members protect the resource and maintain the Air Force's credibility. Robert Peel laid the path to protect both the resource and our good name. A challenging assignment, to say the least. Master Sergeant Munyon knew the objective, and he was the only choice for the job. Using physical force to secure the objective is not the first, nor is it the only course of action. Only when the exercise of persuasion, advice, and warning are found to be insufficient to obtain public cooperation is when we can use uh, physical force, and then only the minimum degree necessary for achieving the police objective. You must be restrained and in control of the situation and yourself. Safe handling of a protester is a tough business, 
And Mike did it the best way he knew how, with lots of self-control. It takes a great deal of patience and a thick skin to deal with that lot. Peel's tenet is to refrain from even the, even the seeming use of trying to punish the guilty. Mike didn't do that. Justice was done, security was enforced, and the guilty parties were punished in court. This is not the only example of times when Mike Munyon exercised self-control, but it just gives you another glimpse into his character. In fact, reading a person's entire personnel record is quite revealing, not for the obvious facts about how well they did their job or how many times they deployed. By the way, Mike's been there and done that. Rather, sitting down and reading each report back to back, themes pop out. The real essence of a person is revealed. Time and time again, his character comes out in ways I am sure the writers never even dreamed of. Each supervisor typed little bits that become clear after you read 22 years worth of material. One such theme is Mike's demeanor. He's always calm, composed, the right person at the right time. Again at Vandenberg during 9-11, he was the one chosen to guard the Three Stars family. Why? Well, Mike has that quality that makes others feel safe and secure and at peace. It was noted more than once that his voice and his presence made a difficult situation better. At an accident scene, it was his soothing demeanor that aided in keeping the victims calm until the medics arrived. And at Keesler Air Force Base, when young trainees, away from home, new to the military, were confused, unprepared, and afraid, and decided to take a permanent solution to a temporary problem, Mike was on the scene. Four times he responded to suicidal gestures by young airmen. And it was his demeanor that brought stability to the scene and helped people in need get through tough times in their lives. Mike Munyon exudes this indomitable spirit that can't help, that others cannot help but adopt. When he's around, no matter how tough life is, you can make it. This was especially true during Hurricane Katrina. His citations read, calm under pressure and selfless heroic efforts. In spite of a 60-foot-hundred breach in a security fence and the shelter being surrounded by five feet of water. 